Hey, this is Dan from Music Explorer. Today we're here with Matt O'Ree from the Matt O'Ree Band. He formed the band in 1994, and he's released seven albums since then. His most recent album, Brotherhood, was released in 2016. It features David Bryan from Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, and Steve Cropper. In 2006, he won the Guitar Mageddon that was hosted by B.B. King and John Mayer. He beat out 4,000 contestants. In 2015, John Bon Jovi asked him to fill in on the guitar for his tour of Southeast Asia. How did you get into playing guitar? A friend of mine, Bob Butterfield, he was the drummer for this open mic on Thursdays. And so he's like, why don't you come down and play a couple songs? And that's kind of how the whole thing started. And, you know, I had seen not long before that a band called BB and the Stingers, and they were a three piece blues rock trio. And that was really like the bolt of lightning that hit me watching him play. When you first formed, it was a, it was a three piece, right? Yeah, that, that's how we started. Again, that was the. BB and the Stingers, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan. It seemed like something that was obtainable, you know, that was like, wow, that, that's the music that I love. It's the guitar playing that I love. And, you know, and it's, you know, I don't need a lead singer. <laughs> I, I had always had hopes, you know, to add a couple female singers and of course having a B3 player. So that that's where we're at right. now. My first record started with uh, borrowing um, the rhythm section, again, back to Bob Butterfield and uh, their bass player, Bill Cherinsky of BB and the Stingers. Uh, but um, I borrowed their, his rhythm section and recorded a couple of songs at Butterfield's recording studio. And that's how 88 Miles started. So in 2006, you won the Guitar Mageddon contest. Tell us about that. That seems pretty cool. It was a uh, guitar player contest that Guitar Center hosted along with Guitar World Magazine and uh, Gibson Guitars. And they uh, started a contest called King of the Blues. Reading it in a magazine was like, oh my God, this is, you know, this is right up my alley. There was five rounds in total. They were about a month apart from each other. So you had, it was about three weeks, I guess. So you had three weeks to plan a new strategy and figure out what you were gonna do to impress the judges to advance to the next round. It got pretty competitive towards the end, of course, as you can imagine. And then the last final round, luckily for me, I made it through them all in New York, was uh, was in Chicago. And then that was hosted by B.B. King. It worked out to be in my favor and I, I won the whole thing, you know, which was a, a whirlwind of, you know, holy crap, I can't believe this happened. You know, the Guitar Center thing opened some doors and we started playing down in North Carolina and into Florida. And then we started working on Brotherhood and then the Bon Jovi thing came through. You've known David Bryan for some years now. He's on a Brotherhood as well. I had met him, I guess, 2013, playing a small bar at, called Jamian's in Red Bank, another Red Bank connection here. I invited David to come up and play a song, and we hit it off as friends. And then uh, amazing how music pulls two total strangers together, like you've been friends all these years. A couple of years down the road, you know, he's like, hey, you know, John needs somebody for a tour. I don't think Bobby Bandiera is going to be able to do the tour with us. Southeast Asia tour, right? Yeah, it was 2015, yeah. When you got in front of that audience that big, were you intimidated at all? We had gotten to the first venue a couple days early to get used to the time change. So we had a rehearsal in the stadium the day before the show. John came up behind me and put his hand on my shoulder. I didn't, didn't know it was him until I turned and looked at him. And he said to me, he goes, it's just like any other gig. So I was much appreciative for the vote of confidence but inside, I'm like, no, it's not. He's a friend to say. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> but I, I know that he knew that I was nervous, you know, so that I, th I thought that was so cool with him. You know, he's, he knows all the right things to say, and he says it with passion because he means it. And that was one of those moments that I thank him for. So you're also doing guitar teaching. Started as a favor to an, my girlfriend's neighbor, and he, he was the sound man for Twisted Sister for 25 years. Cool. <laughs> and, uh, my first student, Chris, and he was with me for probably 11 years, because he started real young with me, like six years old. You're playing in Volvo Room, and that just sold out. We're back there on the 29th of January, and yeah, it's, it's already sold out. We're excited. And that's a Led Zeppelin show, right? Our original and our Led Zeppelin. We love Led Zeppelin, obviously, and gets a chance for Erin to really show off her amazing voice, you know, singing Robert Plant. You know, it's, it's just so great to bring such iconic music to people. What's your most memorable moment, treasured moment, and also what's the funniest thing that you could think of that happened with you in rock and roll? Erin and I met at the Wonder Bar in Asbury Park, and she walked over to the bar and she asked me, can I buy you a drink? And not many women buy men drinks, you know, so it was kind of like, yeah. So I think we did, <laughs> we, did, we did a shot together. It was a shot. Yeah. 
So when we uh, finally got together, you know, in a relationship, I decided <clears throat> I want to ask her to marry me. We had a Christmas show coming up and it was going to be at the Wonder Barn. And I'm like, well, this might be the opportunity to, to do this because I didn't want to ask her to marry me on a stage. But then I'm like, you know what? We, we met at this place. She has a version of Santa Baby that she did. It's fantastic. Our keyboard player, Matt Wade, was like, you know, when we get to the part where she says, you know. We got to mention one little thing, a ring. Yeah, where, where a person asking Santa for a ring. Why don't we all stop without her knowing that we're planning this? <laughs> and, and we had rehearsed the song a bunch and we couldn't get it right at rehearsal. Here we are playing the song and we know that all of us know that we're going to stop because that's going to be the moment. So she turns around and looks at us and is like, you idiots, you screwed this up again? <laughs> we rehearsed this. Got down on one knee and did the whole thing. I it's, think you can watch it on YouTube. It's on YouTube. <laughs> it is.